In this exercise, you have a chance to learn about the anatomy of brachiopods. So these are members of clade Lophophorata, phylum Brachiopoda, and these particular individuals belong to subphylum Craniiformia. Uh, these are inarticulate brachiopods. Genus name is Lingula. So let's walk through the external anatomy of these animals. As you can see, they are shelled organisms. They are bivalved, but they are not bivalves. Uh, bivalve mollusks have shells that are right and left-handed. And in brachiopods, the shells are dorsal and ventral. And it's not easy to tell which is dorsal and ventral in this particular species until you open it up. So some of the things that you could see uh, in this species if you had live specimen is that around the margins of this shell, especially up here along the uppermost margin, would be prominent bristle-like structures called chidae that extend out. You could also see chidae along these lateral edges. And also chidae are prominent in some cases. You can see some here in this specimen at the junction between the shell and the pedicel. So this structure down here is the pedicel and it has a, um, a cuticle, that, this transparent portion, and it has muscle that extends all the way down to the base. Now these uh, lingula are interesting compared to most other brachiopods because these are typically found, in fact, they, they require a soft sediment. And the pedicel is anchored in the soft sediment. In fact, all the way down to about this uppermost portion of the shell is below the surface of the substrate. If you were to do a cross-sectional cut through the pedicel, what you would see would be an outer ring of the cuticle, an inner ring of muscle, and then a lumen or a tube that runs the length of the body of that pedicel. Okay, what I've done here is I've taken a cross-sectional slice through the pedicel, and so what you can see so you can see out here, this clear material is the cuticle of the pedicel, and this pinkish material, the ring in the middle, is the muscle of the pedicel and has that lumen or the space in the center. You can also see in the shell these concentric rings. This is the oldest part of the shell, and the youngest part of the shell is out here. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the internal anatomy. And so I need to uh, do some prep for that. Okay, to take a look at the internal anatomy, what I've done is remove the ventral shell. These animals, as you recall, have dorsal and ventral shells instead of left and right-handed shells that we find in bivalves. And the lophophore, which is this double coiled structure right here, is always attached to the dorsal shell. And let's just measure the length of the, uh, the portion that we're looking at right now. Let's take a look at the internal anatomy of these animals. Now these animals do have an internal cavity that houses the lophophore. And what you can see actually branching out, these little extensions down in here, are extensions of the coelom that line the inner surface of the shell. The margin of the shell we can see right here, and a few of the chidae that I referred to earlier on. These chidae are designed to keep large particles out so that only the small ones can get in. Those are the ones that they're going to capture. The two arms of the lophophore, one curling to the left over here and the other one curling to the right over here, have short uh, tentacles attached to them that are all the way around the edges. If you had an opportunity to see this firsthand, you would see that these lophophore supporting structures are rather stiff. This tissue that goes all the way out to the edge of the shell, we call the mantle, just like you call it the mantle in bivalve mollusks. Okay, let's take a look at the musculature. So what we have up here, these two pinkish structures, one right here and another one right here that's partially obscured, these are the anterior adductor muscles. So these muscles attach both shells to one another and can clamp them together. 
At the posterior end of the animal down here, this other pincus structure is the posterior adductor muscle. Now these are inartic inarticulate brachiopods, which means that they don't have a hinge. They're just held together with their soft tissue. Now other muscles that are found inside of these animals, there are three adjuster muscles. And these adjuster muscles, one is right here that attaches to the dorsal shell down underneath here someplace. This whitish one is another of these adjuster muscles. Broad, broad muscle that attaches, its insertion is down here on the dorsal shell and up here on the ventral shell. And a third adjuster muscle is located right here. So these adjuster muscles keep the, uh, the, the two shells oriented to one another and they can contract them and move the, and slightly adjust the shells side to side. So the adductor muscles pull the shells together. The adjuster muscles do exactly that. They adjust the shell orientations to one another. Okay, let's take a look at what else we can see. Right here, this prominent green organ. You can probably guess what this is by now, hopefully. This is a digestive gland. And this yellowish, orangish material is gonad. Okay, the other prominent structure that we can see in this orientation is the mouth, which is a tiny opening located right here. There's the mouth right there, located between the two arms of the lophophore. Now one thing that I want to show you while I have this in this orientation is a little bit more about the lophophores. So if we come in here and pull these lophophores apart and kind of flip them over, what you'll be able to see is the coiled structure of the lophophore and the many tentacles that are on the uh, the other surface. Pull that over. And that frilly set of extensions coming off of that inside, or what would be actually its dorsal surface, are the tentacles of the lophophore.